too spicy. Like we've, although to be fair, Tian Meng has played it in this major already, so it is somewhat viable for the side of Azure to take a clockwork if they're really worried about the Enigma Black Hole here. No one can ever forget, Mike. Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. I like the spice though, Mike. I like the spice of this Techies Paws 3. That's some good spice. I want to see it. Yes. Dude, I, I had a... Okay, so this is my caveat for Enigma. I've had an Enigma go double Wraith Band Atos, and he did like 120 damage by 5? Which is double Wraith Band or something? Like 80 damage or something stupid like that. With Malefist to chase down, like the hero can feel good as a core, although that's likely not what you're going to see as in pro games, you're still likely to go for aura buildup, maybe a blink BKB rush at best, but it is a viable universal type builder, you know, just because of that stupid damn type. Five damage per level. Very nice. Very nice. Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. Yeah, can make it a little bit tougher. It's still not your hard disable true BKB for the black hole. So this is still looking like a smooth game for Miero to kind of line up for that. And they double down on the aggression here on the side of Nine Pandas. Going into the Sky Wrath Mage, um, having a decent enough combo, Ancient Seal to threaten. They've got a really nice target to gun down. The Timber Salt early on is going to be very susceptible to magic damage. And the softening up that Nine Pandas has, like a couple of the Ks down, Ancient Seal up. I can see this Timber Saw coming out here not lasting too long. For Chalice, like it, it is something that they have to be very weary of on Azure right now. Storm Spirit. Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. Yeah. I would prefer the Ember. Maybe a wild pick like a Pangos available as well, but I don't think the matchup's the best. And they'll go with a Quap instead. So looking for their own tempo here. A lot of burst damage on hand from Azure Ray. Again, no mid here is going to feel good playing into a Sky Rat rotation. So you're always going to have to cop it there for Somnus. But if Nine Pandas are forced to stay in their lanes, then the Quap versus Storm matchup is pretty stable. I don't see the Quap outright winning. She can apply a lot of damage, but so can the Storm. Double Overload is going to be a big, a big threat. The uh, Vortex is not too bad for the Storm to run up to the Quap. She doesn't have the biggest range in the world. She can still kind of try to pressure here on the timing for Kiyotaka. I like the back and forth in mid. I think it's going to be really fun to watch. Something like Quap Storm, it can get a little bit more aggressive with how, how close they can get as ranged heroes. 
Uh, the co-op's one advantage is that the storm will have to walk up to the creep wave to use the remnant to clear out. So the co-op will have the range advantage, maybe be able to get a couple of shadow strikes in, get a scream of pain in, and that's where the storm can feel a little bit weaker in trading with a co-op. Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. Radiant Team Ban. You'd have trouble with a Slark here if you were a Zero Ray. Laning into the Tim can always be awkward. A lot of melee laners just don't have a good time, but Slark eventually can start to right click away. Feel better with the Essence Shift. You don't have the hardest lockdown as well. Versus is viable as well. It's the same concept as the Slark, right? You stack up on the Tempestaw, but I think the Slark is a little bit better at kind of handling that because he has mobility. So you can always try to juke out if you're in danger. You can always catch out the Tempestaw as well. And you don't normally get chains in lane, but on the offlane, you sometimes do. They'll go oh. the NP instead. This is something that we've seen Ramses dip back into multiple times. He loves his nature's profit. Mind you, this here is in a very weird spot. Doesn't get picked up all too often. It does feel a little bit dead, but I don't think it's completely dead. Like, it's uh, aggressive teleports can be really nice with how his toolkit has been reworked. Azure will just close out with a bristle. Nothing to directly threaten the bristle back in this game for low. So we should be able to have a really fun time here. Ramsey's Nature's Prophet. I am interested in seeing this because, again, the hero had been reworked. You have damage coming through now when you teleport in, which is rather interesting. I think uh, I want to see how much impact that has. Like, just having this buff on teleportation seems rather interesting. Like, you have, again, what is it? Level 1, 36 damage bonus? And then um, maxed out, you have like 78 damage on the teleportation in. So it is a good chunk of damage to play aggressive. And I think this does play into how ninth pandas do run, right? Like they play a really aggressive game. And the NP can be one of those heroes that plays really aggressive. They've got really good push coming in. Although how effective that is with all the creep clearing you do have with a term saw and a quap can be questionable. But just the aggression. I'm a, I'm a fan of this one from nine pandas. I just, I can see it work. All the way of Azura Ray with their draft, because we have. One against nine pandas. I mean, I think split on who we predict has, has the better. away very very soon and in fact it does over to that it's gonna be very interesting to watch i believe the np it, well you said it's been losing mike it's you are wrong it's been uncontested oh. not even picked up not even banned not no, no, even no. picked up throughout the not tour. during the major oh th no 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 throughout tour three and the major uncontested not banned not picked. See? so I'm not sure, but I'm checking the stats right now, and it does say All it's right. probably You've one of me. three uncontested heroes. So I'm keen You've to see me, what Nine Panda says. Hey, Mikey, you speak numbers. I'm your analyst. I'm supposed to have the numbers, Mikey. You know, you can't do everything, Mike. You have to give <laughs> oh, me a my... job. But but the Nature's Prophets in my pub games, John, said Michael Phoenix. <laughs> Soy champ. <laughs>
<laughs> that sounds like a bad time, Mike. I feel bad for you in your pubs. This is when you forget to change your name, isn't it? Like, this, this is exactly when you jump into a pub right That's after a... casting and you forgot to change your name. Every time I forget to change my name, and people, in the rare occurrence that they actually recognize who it is, man, it becomes the most toxic game ever. Really? You know what it is, John? Because everyone on the enemy team starts targeting me, and everyone on my team, every time I make a small mistake, say, oh my god, Caster can't play Dota. Every time. <laughs> I've got I, pretty I, chill games. Uh, very fortunate, Mike, you know? Oh, I, it's, it's racism, Jonathan. It's racist. Uh, the, the Filipinos you have your back. You can't see it. Yes, yes. But when yes, it, so when it comes true. to me, when it comes to me, Jonathan, they're like, oh, hold on a minute. This this idiot play-by-play -play caster. What's he doing? <laughs> Why did he chop that tree down with Quilling Blade? That's the wrong tree, MLP Dota. <laughs> Sounds like we're talking about some childhood memories, Mike. Sounds like pretty traumatizing <laughs> for you. Good to hear. Always fun to see us. This should be fun to watch as well. Gummy vitamins is what Solo needs as we're taking a look at the lanes breakout down mid. Kiyotaka on that storm. Up against Somnus on a Quap again. Pretty decent lane for the Quap. The storm can play this, but it's almost a match matchup into the Quap just because of Remnant. Now, to come in to harass, you have to be pretty damn close as the storm. So Somnus will always have the edge with a shadow strike range, with a right click range as the storm tries to come in. Already some good blocks and good clears coming out from Somnus in the wave under the tower. Some denies coming out from Kiyotaka, but it, this this lane holds steady. Kiyotaka can look for relief from a Skyrath Mage rotation. If the side lanes go well, Antares is going to have a lot of impact on the mid if he can leave. Things are looking uh, damn good, that's for sure. Is Antares being harassed out just a little bit here by our Witch Doctor, but it's going to be just fine. Low getting a lot more aggressive here as the Bristleback, pushing the wave out very far towards the tier 1 Dire tower, but just can do this very confidently. See, with the with the Bristle, you just want that Vanguard up to feel really tanky, but here comes Antares. Getting very aggressive. Low, almost down. Is not gonna fall. 9 HP he survives on. But now your Witch Doctor, finding himself in a little bit of danger, will cop the concussive shot. He has the healing with the Voodoo Restoration, so he will make it to another day. But Azul Ray, down to the safe lane, they do need to be somewhat cautious. Like, they, they probably don't want to dive that far. You're getting some good spacing from Antares, just managing to drag that attention away from the Enigma. You're already mostly out of mana and low. It does pop the Mango. Taking a look up top, though, then a lot coming out here from the Nine Pandas. Ramsey's very comfy on Nature's Prophet here. It's a hero that he loves, that we've seen him fall back to even during Dream League 19. Not so sure about 20. But certainly in DL19, something that Ramsey's performed spectacularly on in the NP. It's it's a solid hero still. I think the lane into Timp isn't too bad. He gets blasted off, though. Yeah, Ramsey's big, big trouble. Gonna try for the TP, but is not gonna make it. FY, able to secure first blood on the techies. A fantastic start for him. Not so much for Nine Pandas. Yeah, it's uh, a little bit wonky. They were threatening quite nicely earlier. Solo was doing a great job of just stacking these decays, but not really able to find the kill on the Timber Saw. As the levels go up here for Chalice, it should start to feel a little bit better as well. Level 2 Reactive is your turning point here to start to tank through a lot of that damage. The decay is still, the decay is still going to be annoying, but it's not going to be too bad. FY as well, can always trade hits with Solo for free. No problems for the techies there. Already a solid start coming out here for Azure, at least in terms of lanes, although you are getting a lot more from Ramses despite the death. He is finding CS. And Miero, he is playing that classic free farm enigma. Uh, if the Bristleback can't gap close, then you're just able to deny the creeps, control the waves, constantly spam out the demonic conversion eidolons, and don't really have a problem here. Absolutely not. Looking back at bottom lane, Nine Panda still doing a very good job. But Lowe is finding CS. Like, he's 17 and 3. It's not the absolute best, and some of those are just going to be naturally Eidolons. In fact, look at that. Three Eidolons taken here from Miero. Low. I mean, suddenly, he's at the top of the CS board. So never mind what I was saying, John. A couple of Eidolons, and suddenly you're good. Yeah. It's all you really need. And that is something that Bristleback will enjoy. Doesn't have the healthiest mana pool, but at least has the Lotus for some flash mana in case necessary. They are running down top lane, and Sola's been pretty on point with the double Ks here. Cal's not the healthiest. 
Certainly not. Solo gonna jump in. Ramses does TP. Chalice just zipping the other way with the chains. Not gonna be enough. He is down. Solo with a very nice setup here for Ramses to take a kill for himself. FY, he's got two spells up. He could have tried for the Undying, but he wasn't confident with his damage. The Solo does have the raindrops and the stick charges up, so he won't bother trying for the Undying. And Solo, of course, just going to deny himself to the tier 2 mid tower. It will actually give the, the kill away to FY, but no XP. Solo, he won't mind that. He just wants a free reset. Yeah, just wants to get back in that lane, start spamming the key stacks once more. Nine Pandas finding themselves a little bit with that deep movement out. Inside of Azure 8, again, not too unhappy, but they are, they're starting to get some space out. Somnus has a free time down mid. They're starting to really apply that pressure down bot. Low with a full vanguard up. Not in any Kiyotaka. risk of dying. Kiyotaka, FY, he misses the sticky bomb, Ooh. but he lands the blast off. Kiyotaka still trying to run, FY unable to finish off the kill. And the sorry is because he messed it up. Had he gone for blast off first, that would have been a kill. FY went for the sticky bomb instead and ends up missing. But FY, he had the vision with the Observer Ward over Kiyotaka. And the storm had zero mana, so there was really no way out of that. Had the blast off been committed first up, FY already apologizes for it. And we move on. Yeah, missed opportunity. It is still good pressure nonetheless, as Somnus finds himself in Tares. Yeah, and Tares. Chase down. Not much in the way of tanking through this. He will try to juke and jive, but it is not going to be enough. Somnus able to pick up his first kill of the game with the Queen of Pain, and even gets himself a regenerate. Because why the hell not? What more could you ask for now on the Quap? Free time mid. You can kind of try to threaten now with Sonic Wave, not the safest of times for Kiyotaka. He is about to hit six in the storm, so a kill threat shouldn't be too easy to find. Miaro. Caught by the uh, by the blast off, taking a lot of damage here from Low. He'll try to run. He's not level six yet. They do at least kill off Qian Ming as Low is still chasing Miero. Finally going to go down to Fy, picking up his third kill of the game as Fy will run Low. He'll chase down Antares. He's quite low in terms of the HP pool, but he does have a Lotus up. In comes Ramses trying to help Ramses. He might have enough with the Sprout to hold down the Bristle. Low's gone too far. Low's going to drop. And FY actually went down to the Eidolons of Miero to boot. So they got both of them. It's top side. Chalice at least does take the Wisdom Rune for his side. And it seems like Solo will end up sacrificing himself for the attempt as the stun is going to come through. Ancients trying to help deny off Solo, but not going to be the case. Good back and forth there. Overall, you're more than happy in the Nine Pandas finding those kills. Even with that, that of Solo up top, he's trying to make space, he drags. The Timber Saw away from the source of action down bot. 5-4 to four start. Nine Pan is slightly ahead, but you're not really behind here on Azure. We do have concerns with how fast Ramses is building up. He is going back for the Midas build that we tend to see him enjoy on the NP. And once that's up, he can just scale up even faster, clear out the jungle. Get the farm. I have to say, this teleportation, it's so weird that they decided to buff it. Right? Like, did you feel yeah. like teleportation needed more than it currently has? 72 free <laughs> damage maxed out, 6 armor every single time. It's like, why? God only knows, John. Here, Taka. Fighting for the haste rune does not get it, but he will get FY as a trade. But here comes a big sonic wave. Somnus landing on 3. Ramses will die to the melodic damage. They will get Qian Ming, but they have lost on Tardes. So Somnus now focusing down the tombstone, making this tough fight a little bit easier. The Solo has been left behind. Solo should go down. Somnus picks up a double. Three for the price of two in the mid lane. A perfect team fight for Azura 8. That's just some smooth angling coming out there from Azura 8. Nine Pandas over committing for that, for that kill, for that event, and they get punished for it. Azura 8 more than happy. To feed off those kilts onto Somnus, finally getting that Sonic Wave use off. And they do manage to reel back some control in. You still have time to stall, I think, Nine Pandas when it comes down to their draft. They have good push potential, but you are looking to play a slower game. Build up on the Enigma, build up on your Storm and NP. So they have to be weary of his array playing fast here as they are smoking up once more. Nice scan. Nine Pandas, they know it's coming. They'll get rid of the Observer Ward. Tian Ming has jumped in. Stun was thrown out, but Kiyotaka will move back in onto Tianming. 
Zura, they're going to try and help out. Blastoff is there. Solo at least gets caught. But here comes Ramsey. He's trying to back them up as Somnus getting caught out. We'll go down. And now FY trapped in the Sprout should drop as well as Nine Pandas. A very nice setup. A perfect scan out from whoever that was. Seeing the smoke was out, they do deny the ward off immediately and just prep for the team fight. It's even bottom lane low. Being chased now is the... Oh, oh the black hole. He cancelled. He cancelled the black hole. He didn't want to pop it. And sadly for him, he cancelled at the wrong time. Maybe cancelling because he got Bristleback facing backwards to him? Might have been a little oh. bit dicey, but I feel like you could have still found that kill opportunity for sure with Ramsey's committing. Missed opportunity to find low. Nonetheless, Nine Pandas getting some good punishment off their end for that fight up top. And again, you're seeing Ramsey's just take this constant activity out. Again, it's still level 1 teleportation, but that's still a lot of damage coming out there. Like, why does he get so much? 36. 36 free damage for that first hit. Going down 6 per stack, but gaining more armor. Like, NP is an oddly aggressive core right now. Yes, he is. Yes, he certainly is, John. Bottom lane. I was going for a bit of a chase on Tamiro. Now he's in trouble again. He's just so deep. Just continues to dive the T1 tower like this. This might be the the third, fourth time I've seen this. But the second time Low is going to die to it. It's mid lane. In the meantime, Somnus does drop on the Quap. Antara is able to take him out. Azure Ray trying to respond, but they just don't have it. No way to lock down the storm. Does mean that they are forced to back away. And that is a concern as this game goes on. You don't have that hard hold for these mobile heroes in the storm. Like you're going to need a hex build up from somewhere. The Orchid is being built up here by Somnus, so that is going to be a solution early on. But Kyotaka has been managing to bounce back well in this game so far. Still at the bottom network across all the cores, but the farm distribution is fairly even top to bottom anyway. It, it's not like you're actually lagging behind too far back on the Storm Spirit. I think for nine. For nine pandas, this is a pretty good pace because again, you're expecting a zero ray to kind of take point here. We'll smoke out with Antares and Kiyotaka. They will into the mid lane. They go nine pandas looking for Somnus. Somnus backing off at the right moment, trying to go for the 12 minute power rune, but it is going to be down bot instead. Kiyotaka picks himself up an illusion. Somnus instead will take the dire bounty. The rotation is still happening. Antares and Kiyotaka trying to get there. They just need to land that Ancient Seal first, so Somnus will just die. Kiyotaka can't go for the Vortex as well. Somnus, he already committed the blink, so he's trapped up in trouble. Somnus is down. FY gonna try and TP out. With the disarms, they cannot take him down. So FY is fine, but they found a much bigger target in Somnus. Nine Pandas. Throughout this mid-game so far, doing a, a fantastic job of just constantly chasing down this quap. Yeah, they've just constantly applied that pressure. Ensure that Somnus doesn't get a smooth ride into the Orchid. Ramsey's takes point again, joining in in any fight he sees the opportunity to do so with a teleportation up. Zip in. Oh. Bottom lane. Kiyotaka, just so aggressive. We'll take down Tiang Ming. They'll come through the twin gates for that one. And I love this roaming duo of Kiyotaka and Antares. Like, it, it's just so potent. This, uh, this combination of Ancient Seal with all the damage of Kiyotaka. And it just continues to work. It's a lot of output coming true. And it's really hard for you to play into that right now for the side of Azure Ray. Like, with Timursaw and Bristle, you kind of need some farm to get going. You don't have the hold yet. You need the Orchid up on Somnus. Which isn't too far off now, to be fair. Top lane, Chalice getting caught. Spirit Vessel gonna just burst him down. Zmiero this time will take the kill on the Enigma. They're just not stopping. Kiyotaka just constantly with his Skyrath. And on top of that, this is without Ramses joining the fights. Like, Ramses could TP in at any time and help them if they needed it. But they have not. Yeah, just going back to farm. Like, he hasn't had the need. He's done it a couple of times, but not in the last two, three fights now. And he is getting free farm on the NP, starting to pull ahead of the pack at 9k net worth. Solid 1.7 above the next. He is inching towards that full Mjolnir. So we know how Ramses likes to play. He loves to play a farming game. 
And once he hits some initial items, that's when he really starts to pop off. So they've managed to secure that kind of start here for Ramses. And this is a good turnout for Nine Pandas, right? In comparison to their game up against Gaiman, which you could argue was less about Nine Pandas, more about Gaiman and how badly Ice Frog needs to find a way to nerf them, I suppose. Although it doesn't seem yeah. like there's a way to do so. Nine Pandas are rallying here. 4k up, 8 to 14. And they're in fine form. Like, this is the exact kind of gameplay you expect from Nine Pandas as well. Just being able to do a lot, working the map, forcing issues. Uh, Azure Ray and Chalice, he's already got the Vanguard up, trying to work on the Kai Sanj. But it, he doesn't feel like that tanky Timber Saw. There's so much magic damage right now. Probably needs something like a Pipe, or at the very least a Lotus Orb to get a Dispel off. So, solo, he's popped the, uh, the Golem here. Chalice not able to burst him down like he wanted to. Low now getting Malifist up by, by Miero. But they will clear out all the Eidolons, all the creeps. Now a counter smoke. Azul Ray. Still gonna try. We'll head up north through the mid lane. And Tardes will have his own smoke broken on the Skyrath Mage. Could be a nice target to start on. And it will be. And Tardes getting caught. He is gone. Just a support pick off, but it's something. Yeah, goes the way of Somnus as well. So you're more than happy about that coming out onto the Quap. Full Orchid ready to go for Somnus. So you have some of that control ready. If you do show up in Kiyotaka, it has to be a bit cautious. He also has his own Orchid, so you could just Orchid each other, I suppose, and have some fun there. Heck and love Orchiding each other. Kiyotaka just going to walk away from the Nasal Goo. It's all right. They might start maybe pressuring the mid-tier 2 tower a little bit, but I don't think they're, they're that confident in trying to take tier 2s at, at this point. Just pushing in the mid-creep wave is all they're doing. Of course, Nine Pandas not really reacting to this whatsoever. They're just continuing their own farm. Solo, though, he's going to get caught. Death Ward is there. FY blast off being committed. Solo is actually a very tanky boy, but Somnus is going to be able to claim the kill for himself and the Queen of Paint. All things being said, done though, like, Rams is just completely free farming. Nine Pandas couldn't care less about Solo dying. As long as this Prophet is hitting creeps, they are more than happy. Just keep... keep that build up. You know you scale pretty damn well here. You can kite around to Bristle as well. Down the line, uh, you will have to get some Top four stabs up. They do not see Somnus. He'll go into the Orchid, onto the Enigma. However, they have lost Qian Ming. FY also being caught out here by the Sprout. Will blast off back into Muero, but cannot get any kills as he will drop. That's yeah, kind of the thing with Nine Pandas. With these heroes, they can rotate so damn quickly. And speaking of rotations, they'll rotate right into the Roshan pit. Not going to take too long to find a subjective for themselves. An Aegis for Kiyotaka taking point here could be massive and forcing even more movement out. Choking out the side of Azura Ray. Azura doing what they can. Low still needs to get that Ags up on the Bristle. Not at that point yet. We'll try to contest here. Oh, they've got to be quick. Roshan getting low. Low is trying to move his way in. Roshan now officially down. So this might not be the team fight that Azura Ray really wanted to go for. The Nine Pandas are the ones retreating. So they just want to leave the area with the Aegis intact. So Solo, he will be left behind to tank the gank for his team. They'll be okay with that though. They'll get away with the Aegis. That's all they really wanted. Yep. Again, secondary life for Kiyotaka means he, he doesn't mind jumping in too far by himself. As long as the team backs up for his second life, he should be more than happy to kind of get these fights going once more. Not that he's backed out of initiating for the team anyway. Azuri smoking up with her supports here. Kiyotaka has been spotted. He'll zip right towards the supports. They got the Orchid off. They've got the Storm trapped up. This is a big one. Aegis is down. But how do you hold him down the second time? FY is going to try and time the blast off perfectly, but it's a little bit off the mark. And Ramses now has joined in. So is Miero. Oh. He gets a two-man black hole. They found Somnus. Somnus is gone. So is FY. And now Tian Ming. He'll be the third one to drop. Nine Pandas, they will just keep going. Low, he'll try to fight back on his own as the Bristle. Chalice is there too. Miero is down, but Low is going to drop. They have lost the Bristle. They are losing Chalice. They've brought Chan Ming back into the team fight. He bought back for this, but it means nothing. It's too late. It's much too late. They saw oh, him no. take the Watcher. 
Why take the watcher? I, th I think That's the just, issue was he walked under the watcher anyway, so he's probably oh. just dead. Yikes. You have to remember, Roshan does give you all watcher control. So you can't just path your way back to safety there. Let's get yeah. punished for it. Nine pandas, 12 to 22. In strong form. They're trying to jump solo. Probably not a kill threat onto the Undying. I will have to say, like, the damage output right now in Ramses is kind of incredulous. There's some quirky stuff. I'm, I know I'm gravitating a lot to the NP. Again, this here has been uncontested. It has some quirky stuff it does. Look at the damage he gets when he teleports that's, right in. That's crazy. He gets free plus 72 damage with max stats, and then once the stacks are gone, you get 16 armor in exchange. He had so, plus 96 to start, John. He had even more yeah. than 72. Yeah, yeah, no, no. I mean, the buff gives you plus 72. Like, the teleportation buff max out is plus 72 damage for you. I, so, I, theoretically... No, no. Yeah. yeah, it's he has add damage from elsewhere as well. But the teleportation only gives you plus 72. 16 attacks, plus 6 times over. The one thing is, at level 25, does that, you could theoretically just keep teleporting in the middle of a fight. Sure, there's a 3 second cooldown, but just keep jumping forward. Always have the damage. Does it, I'm not sure if it double stacks, right? Like, does the buff duration stack on itself? Because that would be pretty funny. What Nature's yeah. Prophet can do with the level 25. It was 96, by the way, John. FYI, I did the math. It was on the buff. I know what you were trying to say to me, but it is 90. 16 times 6 is 96. All right, all right. I, I used a calculator, don't worry. Okay, I'm not okay, that okay. smart. <laughs> I'm not that clever, don't you worry, John. Bottom tier 2 tower. I mean, it is busted, I'll give you that. Like, that, that is, I don't know why he got the buff like that, but it is very strong. Bottom lane. Bit of a defense to come out against nine pandas, but they aren't going to stick around. They're just going to leave the area. They have a 13k advantage, so there's just no rush in this game. Like, while Prophet hasn't been the most popular hero uh, in, in this meta right now, it is still Prophet. He's got a level 25 timing to hit eventually, and we know how broken that's going to feel. In fact, how is that going to go? When you remove the teleportation cooldown... That's how what I'm asking. How, how does ridiculous stack does this up? get? Does the buff stack up on itself? FY. He's just going to drop to Ramses. Nature's Wrath flying through to secure the kill. They've even got Qian Ming here on the Witch Doctor. Qian Ming going to try and go after Solo, but just Jesus. does not have anywhere near enough damage. T2 Tower. It's uh, as good as gone. Yeah, no saving this one from the side of Azure Ray. And for their lineup, it does, it, they did need to get tempo, right? You've got Bristleback, Timrasa, and Quap as your cores. You wanted to be able to find more team fights for yourself. You wanted to be able to take over more of the map. Camp a lane as the Timbersaw force responses out. Doesn't happen. It's Nine Pandas that stays in control. I am so curious about what happens. If, if we even see it at 25, I don't know if the game will drag on to that point, honestly. With how Nine Pandas are playing. Probably not. But it could. I mean, you know, it's not like Azura Ray or anywhere near out of this yet. It's just that they've got a position one Bristleback that's just not getting to the point where he's going to be a problem. And it's starting to feel a bit too late. But they will find Solo, but now Miero jumping in. Has Black Hole, but won't find the Black Hole he wanted. Instead, the Malefice is going to be more than enough into the Orchid of Kiyotaka, trying to take Somnus down. And Somnus, barely able to blink away, has a regen rune. So he'll reset. But Azure is still dropping. Black Hole is out on low. They've got the Bristleback held down, but at least the Enigma will drop a Somnus back into the fight with the Sonic Wave. They'll find Kiyotaka. Three for one. Azure somehow make that team fight work. Nine Pandas needing to leave the area. It's down to that hesitation coming out there from Miero. Gets the good jump in, doesn't immediately Black Hole. Trying to look for more control if he can catch him out. And. Yeah, that forces Kiyotaka to zip all the way across, starts to run low on mana, can't do as much in the middle of that fight. There's enough an, enough of a window there for Somnus to blink out once the Orchid fades. The cleanup crew and the rest of Azura does kick in. Ramses, with all the damage coming out, needs a break. He will go for the Silver Edge now instead. And realizing that yeah, the Bristleback is still an issue once his back is turned to, as you'd expect. 
so we'll need to divert, but should start to work out that way. Good punishment out from Azurado, keeping themselves in the game, dragging some gold back their way. Nine Panda's still in a very comfortable position, though. Again, very even farm across all the cores outside of Ramses. And this is really the big concern for the side of Azura Ray. Just this nature's profit. And what it's and how well it's been profiteering in this game, right? He's been left alone for too long. You know, and the Ramses didn't get pressured in lane, didn't get pressured in his jungle farm. And you have to kind of try to find a way to lock in both the NP and the storm. And it feels like you only have control for one of those two heroes. Uh, I wonder if there is a stage where the low is going to feel strong enough against this Prophet, though. That's kind of my question right now, because Azura Ray, they aren't out of this game yet. No high grad attempts have happened at this stage, though. Top lane, Chalice. Going to get sprouted out by Ramses. We'll chain away for now, but the zip is incoming from Kiyotaka into the Mystic Flare. A very quick kill. Somnus jumped into boot, but they still had the Orchid. Somnus, massive, massive trouble. In comes Miero to add the Malapus to the mix, but he's still alive. Solo now, the one being targeted. But Somnus will be able to get up. Had the BKB, was going to be just fine. And it seems like with lower round, they should be able to protect the top T1 tower. There's nine pandas, they will leave the area. Not seeing the opening to take an objective. They are out. So, missed the opportunity out for the pandas. Uh, the side of Azure Ray. They still lose a hero. They don't find anything in exchange, but holding on to map control is the big thing. Securing triangle control for the rest of your heroes to keep playing this farm game. Try to scale up. You do have that timing met for Ramsey, so... Full silver edge up. So the bristleback is not going to be as big of a threat now. We'll have to see how much impact Ramses can have, but one, one tiny break is all is all it'll take for Lo to start feeling very squishy. And he has at least the Vanguard and some armor up, but the Bristleback is where the Bristleback shines. No, well, they have found themselves a Witch Doctor here, Jian Ming, instantaneously dying to Kiyotaka. Tier one top tower, not gonna last. Ramses will take care of that. In fact, they might even go for a tier two. Just understanding how powerful they are at the moment. But you do have Chalice there ready to defend whenever. But he has not looked like the tankiest core in the world. There goes the tier 2 now being focused. They will be forced to glyph to try and protect. But Nine Pandas again not really retreating quite yet. Still hanging around the Radiant Triangle. Maybe looking for a pickoff attempt before they do go for the tier 2. We'll, of course, also just wait out the creep wave to come in. But they are going to retreat. They aren't going to stick around too long. And you respect the counter fight coming out from Azure. We've been burned before. Not going to want to get burned again. Roshan is up. So that's what they'll go for first. And it shouldn't take too long with the damage you do you have coming in here. Side of Azure could try to contest, but again, their AoE control is a little bit lacking. You only really have paralyzing cast coming out from Chan Ming. You don't have vision in the area, so the Roshan is a freebie here. For nine pandas, Aegis Cheese on deck. Yataka hesitating on the cheese will eventually pick it up. Can take point for this fight now. They certainly can. Top lane, nine pandas. Gonna move in. Ramsey's not around, but has teleport in 10 seconds. Very nice arcane rune sitting at the bot rune spot right right here for, for Kiyotaka. But they can't see it at the moment, which is a bit of a shame. He might have a look around for it. See if he can find himself a power rune. Meanwhile, mid. Chalice will reveal himself with the Chakram. Arcane Rune now spotted by Ramses, so Kiyotaka will be able to go ahead and pick that one up for himself. Big group up from both teams in the mid lane. Nine Pandas though, I think looking just quite a bit better here with the Aegis and Arcane as they do jump low immediately. Low, what are you doing? Oh, low! Just getting destroyed! That wasn't it. That is not what you wanted to see as Azure Rate. Oh. Maybe not expecting that Silver Edge on Ramses. He didn't show it off at all. He didn't show in lane after that pickup, so... Big reveal there. You can see how squishy that bristle is once the break is applied. Solo. 
is at least going to get caught. He does get a D ward while he is in that Radiant Triangle. That may force Nine Pandas back. I don't think the Undying is the biggest deal. You are lacking Tombstone. Still, Kiyotaka's going to jump in. Miero, he has the Black Hole. He's waiting to commit because he was stunned up. The jump is back in on the Timber. Now, Chalice just gets annihilated here by Kiyotaka and Ramses. It's way too much damage coming out from the uh, the Prophet now as he does also have the Revenant's Brooch. So plenty of damage coming in. And off they go, down towards the bottom lane. They'll ignore the mid-tier 2 tower. Just go right for the high ground, knowing there's three heroes down without buyback. At least Lowe is going to respawn in time for the defense. But you are still lacking FY and you are still lacking Chalice. Yeah, just set to fall. I mean, the Bristleback can kind of slowly try to clear, but it's not fast enough. Second Fortify forced out. Ramses has got an extra use of that Silver Edge if Lowe steps too close here. Smoke is out, low, trying to move in. Ramsey's protected, Muero, he gets the black hole. It's on two targets. It might be time to call this one, I'll tell you, John. Like, they still have two T2 outer towers, but I'm just not sure if there's going to be any scaling for, for Azul Ray with this draft any longer. It seems like just the laning stage was too rough for them. Somnus is still going to try. Kiyotaka, he had the cheese available, so he won't lose the Aegis. In fact, Chalice. Chalice is the one to get jumped. He'll be okay. Instead, Somnus being targeted, forcing Kiyotaka back. But now, a solo may have gone a bit too far. Solo will go down. Nine Pandas in the meantime. They may go back for the mid-tier two, but it looks like they'll split up. They won't stick around for the mid-tier 2 tower. They'll leave with the bottom racks being taken. That's going to be enough for them for now. Yeah, you don't have that much time in the Aegis. You will get a top up here with a shield rune. So perhaps Kiyotaka starts to feel himself, comes back in. 1k HP barrier, very balanced at this point in the game. Ramses, he's inching towards his next itemization as well. I believe that should be his full Scotty up he's trying to work for. And it is. And we'll just actually just switch this for the Satanic. All right. Just for the Satanic instead. More life steal in the middle of these fights. Can you imagine if NP was a universal type? I could. That'd be very fun, John. I mean, why not? <laughs> why oh. not do it, Ice Frog? By the way, John, two levels away from level 25. We can't wait to see it. Ramsey's going to have oh, a, a great man. time with that. But one and a half levels away, excuse me. There you go. I can't Plus 96 wait. damage just whenever the hell he wants it. Because yeah. why not? There's mid lane, low. By himself. Does have the Lotus. Does have the BKB. He's going to try and turn it back. Kiyotaka's completely out of mana. But he's got 20 seconds on the Aegis. They'll lose Chian Ming to start. Ramsey's now moving in onto low. Ramsey's still 15, 2, and 9 in terms of the kill score. FY. Being Vortex back in by Kiyotaka, who still has no mana. He just expiring in one. The regen buff gonna be nerfed here as all taken off by Say is Somnus gonna go for a sonic wave, trying to survive, just can't make it. He cannot make it out. He'll buy back into the team fight, but Chalice is dropping. Oh Low is God. just being deleted from the game. He just disappears. Somnus links back in. Might want to blink right back out because Kiyotaka is not looking to die. He'll just man fight. GG. Chalice calls it. Celebration black hole from Miro. A dominant game from Nine Pandas here for game one. They really show up today so far. That they do. I and mean, again, we've seen this team get rough defeats before. They come back very...